Hello, I'm Dr. Alegria Riva de Neira. I am co-PI of our OER grant here at Colorado State University in Pueblo. And today I have with me Dr. Katie Brown. Hello, Dr. Brown. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for interviewing with us today so we can share with the world what it is that we're doing in our little corner with open education. Um, could you please uh, tell everyone who you are, what you do, and then we'll move on to some other questions. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Um, like you said, my name is Katie Brown. I am currently an assistant professor of Spanish and Chicano studies here at Colorado State University, Pueblo. Um, I teach Spanish courses from 100 to 500 level, which is up through graduate level. And I also teach one uh, literature course for Chicano studies. So. Um, and I use OER pretty much in my Spanish courses only for now. Uh, for now, I love <laughs> I love that uh, enthusiasm for the future. So, um, could you tell us a little bit about how, what brought you to OER? Yeah. Um, so a big part of it was you, <laughs> Dr. Alegría Rivera, um, and your efforts to well, our combined efforts. But I feel like you you were spearheading our efforts to create a zero uh, textbook cost program from start to finish here for Spanish at CSU Pueblo, and again, hopefully out into other areas as well. I knew a little bit about them before, um, and I actually engaged with them before, but I was sort of unaware that that's what I was doing. Do you know, this is so typical. A lot of people who start with OER start because they've been producing materials for their own classes, mm -hmm. and they were just not slapping that CC license on it, but they indeed were making them free for their students, and that CC license, of course, adds that amazing part of sharing it with the world and having anybody adopt and adapt our work as well, right? But very your true. story is very, very typical. People mm -hmm. doing it without knowing they were doing it. I love it. So can you tell us a little bit about your projects uh, that you are doing with OER now? Yeah, so I have two that are published. I like to say published instead of complete because they're <laughs> feels like they're they're never complete, right? Um, they can always be edited or changed or updated. So um, and those are for at our university, they're 300 level classes. So those are sort of intermediate mid to high, we're trying to push them up to advanced mid, advanced high in, in that course. And so um, there is an intro to culture and literary studies, an intro to translation and interpretation. Those are the available ones. And I'm also helping with some colleagues, uh, the Valientes, we're working on a, a project for our lower division courses, which are one and 200 level. Uh -huh. That's amazing. That are That is a lot of projects, by yeah. the way. <laughs> Spread out oh, over time, not not all at once. <laughs> that is that is true, and you know that's something for good for people to hear that it doesn't have to be all at once, and um, we can build uh, upon our work as we go, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, you obviously are engaging in this quite a bit. Uh, how do you think that uh, what you're doing benefits your students and your program? I think that. This the sort of more obvious benefit is just that they don't have to pay for textbooks, our students, and then particularly, I mean, any that's helpful for any student. Our population is, uh, we have, we're a Hispanic serving institution, and we have a lot of students who are first generation, um, maybe not from wealthy families or, you know, um, or our non-traditional students that have other expenses and things going on in their lives. So in that sense, it really helps our student population, but also because the content can be tailored and so relevant to them in their lives. And then on a, a sort of a more uh, pedagogical and program level, the fact that we are a proficiency, oral proficiency-based program, really we use actual standards in we like to incorporate a lot of project-based learning so we can incorporate a lot of those values like student voice and choice 
into the actual OER, the text that they're using and not just the classroom activities or projects. So I think all of those are great benefits for our students. I agree. I agree. I love the fact that with OER, we can tailor to our students' needs and pedagogical approaches. It really is such an advantage because a lot of times when we adopt commercial textbooks, uh, we try our best, but they're, they're always, they always seem to be lacking, right? And this time mm -hmm. we can really, um, we can really add on to whatever it is we need, we think our students need. Now, um, Again, you have obviously done a lot of uh, these projects already. I was wondering if you could share uh, some of your greatest satisfactions about uh, engaging with OER, either on the production end, on the student end, you know, all of them. So I'll touch a little bit on the sort of instructor side, um, since I spoke about some of the benefits for students. I think the, the control, <laughs> like having control and so just the the control aspect is nice the um oer community that i've started to engage with and and meet and learn about is just a community of people that really care about students and um just the whole philosophy of open access um and open educational resources i think i I'm attracted to that philosophy. And so I like those sort of bigger aspects and then also just the, the room for creativity. Um, it's fun to be able to, to do something creative that is also useful and you know will be used by students and is part of my job, but it lets me have a little fun and, and be creative as well. I love that you brought that aspect into it because the creativity uh, can be so rewarding for both the professors and the students, I think, as well, right? Mm -hmm. So I uh, thank you for sharing that little bit, for sure. Now, as everything else, not everything is roses. And so I was wondering if you could um, share some of the challenges that you've had and how have you overcome? Sure. Um, so the, the challenges haven't felt that challenging, but they're there, you know. Um, so I think my, my biggest challenge is I'll, I'll cite three, and this is where the creativity helped too. Um, one was just sort of double-edged. At first, not seeking out enough of other OERs that I could utilize or copy or, you know, um, in some way using my own. And then the other part of that was once I did that, I kind of went into content overload. So then I went too far the other way and I kind of got stuck um, not moving. And so, um, and then the third thing I think was um, just sort of the old ways of thinking, like thinking that the design, it has to look like a traditional textbook or there have to be pages and pages of my own writing when in fact um, I could use more of a workbook type design and use other people's content that is available and, and legal to use, of course. But um, so those are probably three big ones that I have continued to sort of be challenges and opportunities at the same time. Oh, I so agree with you. The fact that uh, there are so many OER now out there uh, is both overwhelming, but also such a great resource, but it really brings in um, both aspects of it. So I mm -hmm. agree, uh, sometimes it can be overwhelming, but I love also what you said about how not thinking about the traditional text linear textbook mm -hmm. has helped you and the workbook aspect as well, because at the end of the day, at least in languages, I know we want our students to do things. So what is, what is so amazing about giving them a bunch of content if there's actual no actual things to do with that content mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, I know that you are quite the expert on that so um, creating all these amazing tasks and projects so I love it I love it thank yeah. you so much now uh, my last question is of course um, uh, for people who might just be dipping their toes into this, what would be some of the advice you'd give people who are just getting started uh, with uh, adopting, adapting, mixing, remixing OER? 
So I think um, my first advice would be sort of what you just said about adopt, adapt, remix is um, really think of yourself as a curator and start there instead of a content creator. I mean, maybe you're a person who's ready to really write an entire textbook. I don't want to rule that out there. That's, that's a possibility. But um, and this sort of goes into the design aspect too. And we've talked about in our program, this philosophy of sort of like the ugly OER or the, the idea that start somewhere, something useful. It doesn't actually have to be ugly, but it's just not maybe as aesthetically, you know, fancy as a text, as some textbooks. Um, but I think with that, if you start with this mentality that you're a curator, and so you're looking for the perfect pieces, um, that, and then the second part would be, as you're starting to look, I would really try to early on have a, a, a layout. So I'm gonna have, eight chapters or eight sections and each of those sections is going to have five subsections and each you know figuring out your very general layout I think really helps to that thing we talked about earlier with the overwhelm because you can kind of use that as your guiding post and you're looking for those pieces to really plug in um, at least at first in those beginning stages and then remember that you can always go back and change things and edit and add more and then one last piece would just be start to learn about licensing like you brought up at the beginning. Um, I think that's really important in learning about legality and what the different CC licenses are um, is really helpful too. Yes, wow. All amazing, amazing pieces of wisdom and advice from somebody who's already been playing with it for a while. So. I thank you so, so much for spending this little time with us and sharing your story, because mm -hmm. I think it's really going to help others. Great. Thank you so much. Glad to be here.